ever thought, what if there was no more food in the grocery stores? What if the economic system collapsed? What if you had to rely on your own know-how to grow your own food? Could you do it? I know a lot about plants. I ran our high school greenhouse in FFA back when I was in high school for them. Ran it for two years, really my senior year. And I know a lot about plants. I know a lot about the plant species. But there's a huge difference between growing plants inside of a greenhouse and trying to grow them out in the wild or even in your own backyard. The amount of work it takes. And I'm talking like, imagine you don't have any tillers. You got to do it all by hand, especially here in the Ozarks, like where I am. How, trying to dig through all those rocks and everything. Just think about what it would actually take. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing this in further detail and what all you need to be successful if you can't go to the store and you got to grow your own food. And I'm going to walk you through step by step of everything that you would need. And some of these things are things that you probably haven't thought of. And some of you are probably thinking, well, geez, I never thought about it. I'm able to go to the grocery store. It's okay. A lot of people haven't. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing how to create a survival garden and what that actually means. Some of you may be thinking, what is a survival garden? A survival garden and the importance of it is, picture this, a scenario where fresh produce becomes unavailable, it's scarce, or inaccessible completely. That's where a survival garden comes in. A garden that is designed for food if times get really rough or if economic disaster strikes. What that means is you can no longer go to the store, you can't buy anything, or there's so little of it that you can't buy it, such as in the Great Depression. It is important to remember to choose plants that are easy to grow, that are packed with essential vitamins and minerals. And those plants are things such as tomatoes, peppers, beans, leafy greens, and root vegetables, so such as carrots and things like that that are easy to grow. Now, depending on the part of the country that you're in, it's really rocky around here in the Ozarks where I live, so it's incredibly hard to grow anything at all, and roots have a hard time going through, even though it seems like these tree roots are all over the place around here. But keep that in mind, if you're up in the mountains and you're going to have to try to grow food in the ground, you're probably going to have a tougher time than somebody out in Kansas that has that nice sandy soil to where they grow everything in the crop fields. Or even back down in Louisiana where I'm from, where they grow watermelons and stuff and it just turns out incredibly well. And around here, you just can't get it to take because the ground is so hard and so rocky, those roots can't penetrate. And that brings me into my next subject here having things to assist you such as hanging baskets some of you may be thinking well if i got a bug out how am i supposed to take hanging baskets ideally you're going to have a stage area already ready for that stuff or you're just going to have a handful of them that you can take to take with you hanging baskets pots there's actually a way that i hope to demonstrate in a future video where you can actually take bales of straw and put the straw and put the soil on top and actually grow it that way so the roots actually grow through the straw and they're not in the ground so you're not trying to grow them through solid rock so it's things like that to keep in mind let's talk about maximizing space in your survival garden in a survival garden and a survival type situation to where if you had to bug out and you had to go out there it is so critical to maximize every square inch of space that you have and to help you save space try to grow everything vertically because that will save you a lot of space to grow it that way instead of trying to grow stuff here and there and everywhere when you only have so much space to work with it is essential that that's what you do and other techniques that really work well just like what i mentioned a while ago is things like trestles and hanging baskets and stacking containers this will allow you to grow more plants in your limited space so keep that in mind as well you don't you aren't going to have a lot of space to work with but more most likely unless if you have a huge greenhouse and even those if you get to where you have to do this you may not have power available so consider that if you do have a greenhouse what are you going to do if it's not being powered and some greenhouses don't have power to them and those are fine as well and that is the other thing i was going to mention if you think you aren't going to be able to grow stuff in your area you can pick up little greenhouses and those will come in handy so much and they do help keep other predators away and i mean predators to your plants not like coyotes and stuff like that 
But I'm talking about animals that could be eating your produce, like rabbits and deer and things like that that are going to come try to eat your vegetables. And, you know, your rabbits are out there trying to pop your carrots up out of the ground and eat those. So just keep that stuff in mind as well. A greenhouse is a huge, really, it's a huge upside if you can't afford to get one you can buy cheaper greenhouses that don't have power going to them a lot of greenhouses now are actually solar powered which is really neat i actually plan on installing one myself at some point again i know a lot about that stuff though and the other thing i want to say to you guys as well while i'm on this learn all you can about growing plants you can never know too much, and food sources is number one. Water and food sources and shelter are your three that you really need, and not in that particular order. And I have a whole other video discussing that and the order that they should go in and the circumstances that could change that order for you. But continuing on with this video right now of a survival guard. Composting is a, such a big part of gardening, and a lot of people think, well, if I... In a survival situation, I had to leave my house. I don't have any way to compost. I don't have the fertilizer to put on the ground. Fertilizer is such an important part of growing. That was another huge deal that we did in, did in greenhouse. Shout out to Mr. Hall. He taught me everything I know. Really, really uh, great teacher and knew so much about plants and taught me so much about all the things that I needed to learn. And I'm still learning stuff to this day. And I try to learn something new every day and that goes into what I was just saying a while ago try to learn something new every day if it's it has to do with the gardening aspect of things or just able to grow your own food but composting think about it like this it doesn't take a lot to be able to compost you can compost with things such as scraps out of your kitchen and your waste in your yard could be a great way old leaves if animals have been through there their feces makes great compost there's so many ways to do this now i will say also be sure to read books on this stuff because just don't go try to use everything because you might get it too rich i know that sounds weird but you might get your compost to be too rich and it's going to burn up all the plants and a lot of people don't 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 realize that's a thing and something else i want to say too Watering too much at one time does not kill plants. Everybody thinks, well, I forget to water. Forgetting to water is one thing. The thing that kills plants, that will kill plants. But the thing that kills so many house plants and everything is people water them too often. Over, You're not going to overwater them if you're only like watering them when they need it. And the way that you tell if they need it, Go up there, fill the soil in a pot. If it's completely dry and extremely light weight in the pot, go ahead and water it. But you're not going to overwater it at one setting. Soak that sucker. Let it all drip out the bottom. I mean, let that sucker just be dripping like crazy. You will end up so much better off doing it that way. You won't kill plants. Trust me. I know what I'm talking about when it comes to this. A lot of people think, well, if I water it too much, that also kills plants. People don't put enough water to them and then they end up drying out so just keep that in mind as well this all has to do with one another the composting thing and water is the next thing i want to talk about as well though water is such an important part it is probably the most important part because without water plants die and the thing that you have to remember water is key to any garden success especially in a survival gardening situation Having a way to collect water, such as a rain barrel, is going to be such a huge deal. Especially if you are out there in the middle of nowhere and you're having to walk to a stream or a lake that may be a mile and a half or two miles away. You're not going to want to do that. And rain barrels also work well for collecting drinking water. And a lot of people don't don't realize that. Again, that's another survival situation that, I'm gonna, that I have other videos on. And we're going to be making way more videos on that stuff in the future. Survival gardens, though... Highly relying on water, and you have to remember, water is your most important thing in any survival situation. Water, shelter, and food, because without the water, you're only going to last three days. Without the shelter, 
chances are you, you're gonna end up freezing death out there and then obviously food because you can go weeks without food but they're all three important they all three work together and this was the video on survival gardening and right behind me right here is actually the garden that i had this year as you can see it's overgrown now it's uh became very well overgrown our growing season ended here i mean it is december some places can grow year round and states where it's warm you can't do that here hope you guys enjoyed this video on survival gardening tips or if you guys were just wanting to get in to gardening and you aren't a prepper or you aren't somebody who is into that style or you think that everything's fine and i'm not going to tell anybody what to think but you think everything's fine and you just kind of want something to do as a hobby that's fine too hopefully you guys learned something in this video if you guys have any questions on gardening comment down below i'll be happy to answer those for you i'm not going to say i'm the know-all be-all expert on this stuff but i have been doing this stuff for a decade now continuously i ran greenhouses for people ran it in high school sold all the plants to everybody so if you guys have any questions about that or if you guys have any questions about particular types of fertilizer or insect treatments and that is the last thing i want to talk about I almost forgot insects being able to protect your garden from insects and other creatures but especially insects that will come up and eat up all your plants a lot of people are like well i don't I, i'm not gonna have any pesticides or anything a lot of people don't have pesticides even that grow gardens anyway there are certain types of plants that you can grow that will actually act as a natural pesticide that will actually keep certain insects away and it will attract other insects such as bees and stuff that will pollinate your plants for you and that is a good thing that being said i'm jared with janar exploration and discovery god bless each and every one of you subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads